Let us now look at how to set up HashiCorp Vault. Okay, this is regardless of uh, what operating system you are using because we will first only speak about the flow in which the server is set up and uh, what is unsealing and sealing of server and um, what are policies and what is the difference between a dev server and a prod server setup of HashiCorp Vault. We will also cover the TLS setup which is uh, like having the SSL connectivity between Vault and your client. Right? So for following up with this tutorial, uh, you can visit tarunshiv.com slash vault hyphen setup. So there I have uh, put up the, art, uh, the article, the code that you have to follow up, uh, everything. So let's begin with it. So if you have already watched the first episode of this HashiCorp Vault series, what we spoke about was uh, about Vault in general and what issues are we facing regarding secret management. Uh, secrets again here are those um, those kind of credentials, username, passwords, uh, the the certificates, the uh, API tokens, right? All all those are secrets. And we saw the problem about the state of secret sprawl, right? Where we have the issue like when we develop an application or we set up a server, we place the uh, passwords at many places like say configs. Uh, the source code, version control system uh, in our files and they're also sometimes logged into the logs, right? So this is the state of secret sprawl problem which HashiCorp Vault tries to solve, right? One of its primary goals where it tries to solve this. So with that, friend, we spoke about that in detail and what are the different um, features that uh, Vault provides us from, a, say, from a layman perspective instead of uh, going into uh, each and every feature which we will go uh, into in the future episodes. So before going on to that, I thought why not we uh, go through how we set up Vault and a uh, few things that you need to know about Vault when a Vault server is installed and it's started. So yeah, coming to the Vault setup. So what is the usual flow of Vault setup, right? So you, we first install the Vault package, right? and we initialize the vault server. So on the dev setup, the vault server comes initialized with the default playground configurations. And by the way, this is not recommended for production setup for a few reasons. I'll, I'll show you when we uh, install it. But just to um, tell about it in short sentences, when we install it in dev mode, the uh, storage for vault where it stores these uh, credentials and the secrets and all it is in memory right it is not a uh, uh, file storage or the the number of uh, storage abilities that vault provides you so it is in memory so when you turn the uh, vault server off all of your secrets and data and setup that you have done is completely lost isn't it and uh, and few other reasons are like um, Vault also comes with just a single token and a single uh, unseal key, right? So uh, that that also doesn't make it that much secure. And also uh, it, it comes in non-TLS mode again. So these are few of uh, the things that I can tell about why you should not be using dev in a prod environment, right? So we covered like we install the vault package, we then initialize the vault server and then we unseal the vault server. So when it comes to production uh, installation, right? Uh, let's now forget about the dev installation, which comes initialized and unsealed. With prod setup, you will have to unseal the uh, vault manually. Now, what is sealing and unsealing? We will come back to it in just a bit, okay? So after you unseal the vault server, once it is unsealed, you, st you check the status and it says it is uh, not in a sealed um, way. Right. Then we create policies for users. So you will be able to uh, generate the root token or you will have access uh, to the root token. Right. And with that root token, you will be creating policies for the users. Now, what are policies you may ask? We will again come back to that in a bit. So you install vault, initialize vault, you unseal the vault server, you create policies for users. And now you enable the various uh, secret management mechanisms. Like say you have uh, key value storage, you can enable that. 
you have uh, ssh key uh, management you can enable that if you want public key infrastructure uh, abilities you can uh, enable that you're going to use uh, dynamic secrets you can enable that so on right so you enable that and start using and also one of the most important points when you are actually uh, deploying it on production is the, the vault themselves have uh, given us a link where they have described how you can harden this production setup for vault and i would highly recommend you all to go through that and um, look at how you can harden your production setup of vault so uh, to tell in simple terms uh, how to make it more secure and make it less vulnerable to attacks right so sealing and unsealing unsealing of vault server now what is this let's let's talk about that see vault stores data in encrypted format right so a encryption key that is being used to encrypt or decrypt the data is also stored along with the rest of the data in the key ring so when a vault server starts it knows where the data resides right in a bit we will come to that where you will see me um, providing a configuration file to the vault production server where it will know the path in which it has to store the data right so the, so the vault server knows where to store the data and it knows where to access the data so when the vault server starts it goes and looks at that place but even though it has access to that data it does not have the ability to decrypt that data because if you remember in the in the previous episode i told you that vault encrypts the data and uh, stores it right so here vault has to decrypt the data now the encryption key that was used to encrypt the data is also placed along with the vault data inside the vault storage right so this encryption key is also encrypted now in order to decrypt this encryption key there is a master key which is again placed along with this vault data right now in order to decrypt this master key we need the unseal keys right now uh, let me recap this you have vault data it is encrypted so along with that you have the encryption key which is used to encrypt and decrypt the vault data right so this encryption key is encrypted with the master key okay and now the ability to decrypt this master key which is encrypted is with the unseal keys right so why did i tell unseal keys and not just unseal key because there are several unsealed keys okay let's take this example scenario setup of uh, say you have five unsealed keys and you need a minimum of three unsealed keys to unseal vault and this is actually possible with the help of the shamir's secret sharing algorithm okay so what this algorithm does is there is one single unsealed key which is split into in our case five different unsealed keys and say you give these five different unsealed keys to five different people and only if three of them submit their keys to the to vault you will be able to unseal the vault server right i think now everything uh, begins to make sense to you and those who are viewing this video you can also look at the diagram here so there is the there are these shared shamir keys and when they are combined they form the combined key using which they decrypt the encrypted master key and there is the encrypted key ring which has another key that is used to encrypt all of the secrets so i hope this is clear if it is not clear please feel free to go back a few minutes and listen to this once again now i told you after unsealing there are these policies that come into play now what are policies so policies help you create the rules that define access to various secrets like say for example we can create policies that allow certain level of access like uh, if you have a path if you have few secrets okay you you, you have stored the username and uh, password of a database say you create several users you will get to decide which user has access to create the um, um, the username and password which users have access to update the username and password 
and which are the users who can only read those credentials right vault gives us that ability so that is those are policies so as soon as you create the policies it doesn't take effect to the user you will have to uh, create the token or auth auth role for the user or the different kinds of authentication plugins that uh, vault has and you assign these uh, policies to that user so once the policies are assigned the user will only be able to do those things so he is restricted to only that access so in case he has only create access he will only be able to create uh, the credentials that to only for the regular exp expression match of the path that we provide to that uh, user okay again we'll come back to how we assign policies how we unsign uh, sorry the, how we unseal the vault server how we again set up the vault server in precise like right? the commands and the screen sharing in the next episode right so for now uh, we have seen about vault setup of vault seal and unseal of vault server i hope that's clear and we also spoke about uh, policies right thank you so much if you, if you have stayed so long in this uh, particular episode see you in the next episode where we uh, look into how we set up the uh, dev mode right thanks so much see you guys in the next episode